Uh, it depends, right? So like if, if in any aggressive deck, you do kind of want to have, you always want to be putting pressure on, you always want to be playing creatures, and you want to be also be drawing cards in the late mm -hmm. game. And I think that this card does do that. Um, so you, if you draw, draft it in an aggressive deck, it's still going to be fine if you're saying that it's going to be costing like five. I, do, right? I would not play this card if I was in an aggressive deck and had less than six instants and sorceries. Um, probably, yeah. I think six. Like, th think about this. In an aggressive deck, eight, eight mana is prohibitive, right? Agreed. No, Clearly. eight mana is very Seven mana is still prohibitive for this effect. It's not good enough at seven. At seven, yes. I think Definitely that is not probably, good enough at seven. probably like a, it, we want it to be a six or five. Right. If it's six, I'm, I start to be interested, but I'm still not sold. And if it's at five, I feel pretty happy about this. Right. I agree. So that. then that, the question, yeah, but then the question is, okay, so we want to cast this when we have six mana, how many turns in the game is that? That's like probably eight turns in the game. So eight sure. turns in the game, we've drawn about 15 magic cards. Yeah, that sounds about right. So that means that we have to have had two instants and sorceries on average in the first 15 cards of our deck, which is three-eighths of our deck. So do a little math. We have to have at least five or six to make this playable. Um, even yeah. considerable. And that's on average. Like if we want to be consistently casting it, even on turn six... We want to have more like eight or nine. Like, I don't think this is really playable in an aggro deck. Frankly, um, I just don't think it is. The okay. average aggro deck. So let's take a look at a quick hybrid geometric distribution here. <laughs> oh, boy. We'll All just right. pull it up let's here. Let's do it. Uh, and so we look at if we have six successes, uh, mm -hmm. sample size is 40, uh, yep. sample size is 15 from a uh, population of 40, uh, yep. and we only want, you know, two spells maybe uh, to two make it like, yep. good, then probability that it's greater than or equal to two, 75%. Yeah, right. that's what I said. So yeah. that, that sounds about right. right. Uh, yeah. Our intuition is pretty good on that. Um, so I think that, that that makes sense. We definitely want to have about six, and then we would say far. I, I wouldn't even be happy. I I feel like there's better bombs to play if you are if you only have six incident and sorceries. Mm, and I think no, it's, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Yeah. Right? Because, you know, you also have to consider, okay, you're passing this for something, or you're taking right, this right. over something else that you could play. So what are you going to take? Like and you, this has significant deck building constrictions on it. I think this is a garbage first pick. I agree. Like I, I, agree. I would never take this first unless the yeah, pack was just because of the double horrible. constraint as well. Like there, there are definitely constraints. Yeah. Well. Uh, so uh, yeah, I mean I, that I really that. limits how high I can rate this. I don't think this is in the B range. It's too limited. It's too restrictive in what we can do. No, I, I no, I agree with you. Now. Yeah, I agree with you. Now. So yeah, it's more like a C. Let's call it like a build around. Build around C, like, what, okay, let's compromise and say it's like a build around B. If you're building around it and you've taken it late, it's good. But if you yeah. haven't... Yeah, no, I, I think it's in the right deck it becomes good. But you don't, don't want to draft it to get that deck. Like, yeah. this is the it's card that's good too in that risky, deck. Yeah. Too risky for a first pick. Or probably even second or third. Oh, yeah, definitely. I expect this, is... this to wheel yes, pretty regularly. I, if, if, because there should only be a deck, one deck that really, really or two decks that really want this card, uh, and even in them, uh, you probably like the, it, you, it has to become good in that deck. If you don't draft it and make it, yeah. Um, Ar yeah. Argon says that it's similar to Thing in the Ice. I assume there's a typo there, but yeah, I think I agree. It's very similar to that card. Thing in the Ice is very. This is powerful. probably more playable than Thing in the Ice. Yes, um, probably in in like a non cube deck, obviously. <laughs> uh, so yeah, of course. Uh, but so the thing about things <laughs> referencing your cube deck from yesterday, of course. Excuse yeah, me, right. yesterday. Yesterday, that thing I performed very well. But the thing about yeah. things I is, at least you can always just cast it and it's like a blocker of some kind. This guy is going to be uncastable a lot of the time. So I guess there is there is that restriction. So it's like it doesn't have like a minor upside. Um, it is either going to get there or it's not. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. we'll see. Anyways, let's keep going. I think that this is going to be a card that a lot of Timmies are going to want to play, and they're going to lose drafts because of it. <laughs> yes, I, I mean, it's a big thing that looks like it's less of a big thing, so they think, yeah. oh, well, I, so I love big things, but, you know, people yeah. telling me I should. But this thing's cheap. It's going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next one. Blood Mist. Three and a red for an enchantment. Mm -hmm. And it says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gains double strike until end of turn. It's interesting. Hmm. So, how many of these do you want to have in your deck before that five two from Sh uh, from shadows becomes playable? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if your if your guys are really high power, then it becomes super relevant. Yeah, right? I don't know how to rate this card. Um, I haven't been playing in a set where a card like this was legal. 
Um, um, I mean, if we look at uh, cons, right, where yep. you have that five mana card that keeps everything uh, oh. double strike. Wait, wait, which one? Um, the, uh, the, or maybe it was dragons. It's the five mana, all creatures. It was dragons, I think, actually, now that you mentioned yeah. it. All attacking creatures you control gain double strike. Yeah, so I remember that. And that was very, very limited in playability, though, I think. It, it was very powerful. when you It was very it. powerful. Very so powerful. you would often pick it early and try to get there. Yeah. Because um, just when it did work, it was insanely good. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about this Blood Mist, though, because it's not quite the same effect. I would put this closer to something like Hom uh, Homicidal Solitude from Abyssin Restored, where the creature, if you have only one, gets plus two plus one life lane. Um This feels like that kind of effect. Yeah. Uh, because it's saying, all right. I think, yeah, yeah. This is not something you want to take early, I think. But uh -huh. I don't, haven't seen enough of the commons in this set to really know. Like, if this set has a ton of 4 twos and 4 and like 4 ones and shit, then this card goes up. I mean, if we're looking at right? cards that are similar, like, so so cards that are interesting with this obviously are things like blood, uh, Fire Breathing, like our next mm -hmm. card, Bold and Play Paler. Right. Effects right. like that. Um, make effect like effect like this. Really it's true. Relevant. The fact that you don't have to pay mana for this effect and it just kind of every combat helps you is nice. Right. I could also see this being halfway decent in like, and I'm not sure if this archetype exists, but in like a red blue tempo flyers deck. Yes. That, uh, it, I mean that's very specific, but I think it could be good there. Um, I don't know though. I, I mean, with flyers, the thing is, flyers just don't have very low power, so it becomes so much. There's less a relevant. lot of three power flyers in this format. That's true. That's there true. are quite a few. Like when I was glancing through blue, I was like, "Yep, there's a three power flyer. There's a three power flyer. There's so quite the a thing, few actually." Uh, the thing is, with your with your red blue flyers, like you kind of want your flyers to be mm -hmm. getting through anyway. Mm -hmm. So, so with three power, you're saying, "Okay, well, this turn, if it's gonna get, just get an extra three damage for yeah. man. So plus three plus zero oh, uh, for you know they can move around for three for four mana. And it doesn't seem amazing. Like if it was an enchantment that I could move around, I wouldn't be like happy yeah. with it, right? I'm much more impressed with it as a I'm I'm a ground deck that mm -hmm. can't get through. Yeah, right? definitely. Like, That's where its power is for sure. Yeah, um, and I like. I mean, obviously, if we if we like take a look at some of the other cards, you know, around here in red, um, it seems like it's actually pretty pretty relevant ability. Like we have a lot of these creatures that are um, kind of want to get through, and you know, maybe not don't, don't have the toughness or uh, have have like assembled alpha has you know a trigger on combat. Like you, you there are things that you know become relevant. Yeah. Um, uh, with with double strike, when Ooh, you're like Audric, you can stack the triggers so that double strike will resolve yes. before Audric's ability resolves. That's, the, that's, that's cool. everything. I think. <laughs> <laughs> build your own. So, uh, yeah, build your own whatever that card's called. Um, awesome. Yeah. So let, let's. What should we rate this? I'm kind of feeling it's in the C range. I think it's. I agree. Because it's I, very powerful, but it's also like it doesn't on its own help you win. As a top deck, it's mostly garbage. Um, um, as a top deck, so like if we look at quadrant theory. Right? right. When you're setting up, I think it's good. When you're when setting, you're setting up, up, I don't think it's that good. Um, it means it doesn't that advance your board really. Uh, that's kind of true. It doesn't advance your board. It makes your creatures much it, more. Much it more makes strong. your race better. It makes your race better. So, but it makes very... your existing race better. That's it true. doesn't. That's it true. doesn't help you. Like it doesn't help you keep up with your opponent. Um, um, I, I agree with that. At four mana, you kind of be saying, okay, well, at four mana, four, a four mana alternatives, right? Yeah. At four mana, I could be casting like a four four or something like that. And at that point, I'm not super happy with Blood Mist, right? Um, so yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Uh, so this is a card that's only really good when you're at parity or when you're ahead, I guess. When you're behind, it does nothing, right? Because it's only on combat in your turn. So yeah, I agree that this is probably like a C, solid C. I think it's a C minus. I'm not going to be looking to draft this very often, um, frankly. I, yeah, uh, if you're drafting an aggressive deck, it's probably uh, significantly better. I think it, yeah, in most decks, it's, in, in most some decks, decks, it'll be better. And red is a pretty aggressive color, but I just don't think it's that good. Yeah, no, I, I guess I agree. I guess see my seems useful. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's the fact that it doesn't, it only works during your combat makes it so much more effective. All right. So <laughs> we have another Bellows Lizard. Yes, we have another effect. That's... It, it does seem to be better than Bellows Lizard, but that's yes. not exactly a high bar. No, it's not. Um, uh, the fact that it's a one-two is pretty relevant. And the blocks. fact that it's a vampire is also relevant. There's vampire, vampire, definitely vampire. a fair amount of vampire synergy. Um, um, I mean, you could pay six mana in the late game to make it uh, assemble your own vexing or not vexing devils. What's the the devils from the the, the five-two devil from the last set? I keep forgetting what its name uh, is because yeah. I never played it. 
<laughs> I, I don't know if I remember those names either. Right, but, but you know, you can you could pay six mana to make a five two, which when you look at like, compare that with like the Quill Wolf. That yeah, this is, this I mean, stuff. the reason this is halfway decent sometimes is activation threat, and that's why Sludge Crawler was so good. Is you know you always have the threat of this thing can pay four mana to trade up with the three, uh, you know, trade up with the th uh, three drop or four drop kind of thing. Yeah, so three Hulking mana is that's three two. Was. It's pretty, pretty right. relevant. Um, but the thing is, I think I, I in this don't format, I don't think... <laughs> like, let, here's here's the problem scenario, right? You play this on turn one. Your opponent plays nothing on turn one, right? You attack with this on turn two. Yeah, and yeah. and they don't, you know, you, you don't... They don't do anything and you play a 2-2. Two -two. Let's suppose you have the dream 1-drop, 2-drop, 3-drop, 4-drop curve. Right. They play a 2-2. Two -two. This suddenly can't really attack unless you're willing to set yourself back a turn and trade it off. Right. Like, right. it, it. the problem with this card is that when you attack it into a 2-2, two -two, you have to pay 3 mana, which in an aggressive deck is your entire turn. And um, it still dies. Yeah. And it still dies. Like, if this was a 1-3, I'd be in. I'd be absolutely in if this was a 1-3. Yeah, I mean that, that that that's a much more relevant toughness. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with that. But um, I mean, they would never do that, would they? Like a one three for one mana with major upside and red? I don't think they'd do that. We have a lot of three toughness creatures in this set. Uh, not necessarily. Nah, for one mana, yes. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. No, if your opponent has skulking one ones, this could get a little better. Um, if your opponent has like a lot of like, if they have a swarm strategy, that could be a little better. If they're really def if they're a deck that's relying on walls to stall, this could get a little better, maybe. But I think this is more of a sideboard card than anything. Yeah, I, I definitely would put this at like a D, D minus kind of thing. I, yeah, very I specific definitely... card that I don't think you really want to play that much. Yeah, like if, I, if I'm picking this anything before the if I pick this up before the wheel, then I'm not happy, basically. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely and... not an early pick. I think no. it's just a D because oh. I mean, what people don't realize is that against some decks that don't have a lot of those two twos for two. You know the activation threat is real, um, yes. and this does matter, but it still doesn't really hold up its weight. I think. Yeah. No, I agree. So, all right, let's keep moving. Borrowed hostility, one red for an instant with escalate for three mana, um, and for those of you who have just tuned in for the first time and haven't seen escalate yet, uh, escalate you pay an extra cost. Usually it's mana, but there are other ways to do it with certain cards. Um, and once you pay the extra cost, you could do both of things. If you don't pay the Escalate, you just get one of them. So it's similar to Entwine in this card. Um, I love this card, frankly. I think it's going to be really I good. think it's very strong. I think, I think that, this is very strong. Yeah. Yeah. Red for plus three plus O oh is basically like if you think of like tit uh, Titan Spring mm -hmm. um, and how much damage that would get through, yep. that this is this is very relevant. Especially the fact that you can just use it to give first strike. As well, and that that will often just let your creature live through whatever it is that is going going yeah. at your combat. I, I think the beautiful part about this card is the flexibility. Right. Um. Sometimes it's a lava spike, you know, and, and it in just deck, you want that. <laughs> sometimes you want that. Sometimes it says, "All right, my three two can trade and win against your uh, three three. Right. Um. Sometimes it's my three two will tr will beat your six six in combat. Right. Um, with for four, for four mana, mana but yeah. still, like that's useful. Um, it's like what's the what was the spiteful motives? Right. It's like a one turn spiteful motives for six or for four mana, which isn't great, but I mean it's a pretty decent trick. Um, yeah, like I think that uh, you uh, um, Rufus actually nailed it on the head. It, uh, yeah. In comparison, comparing with the Banyan reason, uh, mm -hmm. I do think this card comes out way ahead. Oh yeah. Um, and you know, as common, and that's pretty relevant. Yeah, and also. it's possible that I rated abandon reason too high. Um, it is possible. It's uh, possible that it's closer to a C or a C minus. Um, yeah, because of the fact that is... we have a lot of combat tricks and like a lot of relevant you know combat effects. Uh, you know, maybe we have to adjust the ratings a little bit because obviously you can't run too many combat tricks, right? You can't just mono combat trick your deck. Yeah. So I uh, maybe oh, we might have to have to adjust that. But it, it, if we compare there, I think it comes out pretty favorably. And so uh, whatever that got. Uh, C plus, it seems we, we should definitely give this like a D minus or a C plus as well. Yeah. Um, because I it may be, you know, I, I definitely think that the band reason is probably a low C plus, mm -hmm. while this would be, you know, a high C plus, B minus. Perted has a really good question. Ratings are assuming draft not sealed. Uh, generally, yeah, I mean, we're assuming draft, but it's not hard to adjust your internal, like your mental ratings for sealed. Basically, anything that dirtles gets a little better in sealed. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and things that are hyper aggro get probably a little worse in sealed. But you know, even in sealed, you'll play this sometimes mm -hmm. if you're in a reasonably.